Hello. Now we will discuss horizontal stretch and compressions. Well, in transformations, I think students understand translations, reflections, and even vertical stretch and compressions. But it's difficult for them to understand horizontal stretch and compression. It is sometimes really tricky. So uh, let's do it. And here our consideration is only on horizontal stretch and compression. You can look into the other video in which all the components have been discussed. Okay, now let's have a function fx and let's consider that a gx is transformed function of f with f of kx. What does that mean? If k is inside the function, this part is of inside the function, then it represents horizontal. So if k, uh, let me write absolute value of k is greater than 1, in that case the graph compressed horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. What does it mean if k greater than 1? For example, if I have a function, let's say kind of absolute function, right? Now, let's say this is my fx. Now, if I want to draw f of 2x, in that case, this function gets horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 over k. It means every point here will come back half the way. For example, it is x value is here, y value is here. y value doesn't change, but the x value changes by a factor of 1 over k. That means half in this case. So this point moves to half the distance. It comes here. Symmetry is maintained, right? This point comes halfway. Similarly, this point looked like this will come half the way. Do you see this is one? It will come here. And now you can draw this function like this. So this function represents f of 2k. Horizontally compressed. Do you see compressed? It moves in this direction. So from origin the distance becomes half the distance. Do you see that? That is what we mean by horizontally compressed. Okay, When absolute value of k is greater than 1, that means it's 1 point something, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything greater than 1. Okay, Now, in case this factor k, absolute value of k is less than 1 but greater than 0. Well, absolute value will always be greater than 0, right? It is positive value. Correct? In that case, it stretches horizontally by a factor of 1 over k. So that means, let me take another example for you here. Let's take this our function. Let's say this is my function. Now, this is my function fx. Now let's consider another function which is f of half x. Now what happens to half x? It is stretched horizontally. So if this is the point, let's say the x value is here, it goes away horizontally. So it moves to this direction, same distance away. It comes here. 0 multiplied by half, nothing happens to it. It remains there itself. All the points, this point will move this much distance away, right here. So we can join them and get a new function. This is f of half x. Do you see that? Stretched horizontally. Do you appreciate that? Horizontally it's stretched. It may look vertically compressed. That's a different story altogether, okay? Now, let's see what happens if k is less than 0. That means k is negative, okay? In that case, we have reflection on which axis? On y-axis. That is to say, that if I have a graph like this, and this is my original graph, then it gets reflected 
like this on the y-axis. Do you see that? So that is when k is negative. For example, if this function is fx, then this is f of minus x. So that is what it means by horizontally compression, stretch, and reflection. I hope you understand it now, right? Now let me take one example. We talk about functions, but we can talk about transformed functions also, correct? So let's take a transformed function, fx. fx could be any function, correct? And this time, let fx be a quadratic equation written like x plus 2 times x minus 4. Now, what we need to figure out is how do the intercepts, the question is how intercepts get transformed. When we have horizontal compression or stretch. So we will take an example where gx is equal to f of 2x. Now gx is a transferred function of this function. f of 2x means what? It means horizontally what? Compressed by a factor of by a factor of, I'm writing times, half. Do you understand? So horizontally compressed by a factor of half. Now we have to see how the intercepts get transformed in this function. Now let's see. First try to understand the problem. Let me sketch this for you. Let me make a very, very rough sketch uh, for this diagram, okay? So we have x-intercepts at minus 2 and at 4. So let's say this is my minus 2. And let's say this is my 4 here, okay? And uh, somewhere in between, which is minus 2 plus 4 divided by 2, we'll have the axis of symmetry, right? Which is 1. So at 1, so this is 4, let me write 2 here and 1 here. So at 1, we will have axis of symmetry, correct? And uh, how about y-intercept? We know these are my x-intercepts. How about the y-intercepts? So for y-intercept, let me do the calculation here f of 0, at x equals to 0, we have y-intercept. We have x equals to 0, 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 4, which gives us minus 8. So at y-intercept, we have a value of minus 8. So let me draw this parabola first. Let's say this is our parabola. Okay. Now, so what is this point? This is y-intercept minus 8. Okay. Now the question here is, on the function gx, this is our function fx, correct? Let me write fx here. Now on the function gx, which is f of 2x, how will these intercepts, these are my x-intercepts and that's my y-intercepts, how will these intercepts get transformed or where will their image points be? Okay. As you can see, g of x is f of 2x, that means horizontally compressed by a factor of half. It really means that the x values become half of their original values. So the x value here was 4, so it will come like this. This point will come here at 2. And this was at minus 2, it will come halfway to minus 1. How about this value? x value here is 0, right? x is 0. I could write this as 0 times this. So 0 times anything will remain there itself. So this remains here. However, this vertex, which is at 1, will move towards half. Is that okay? So our final graph will have these points. Now this is our new vertex. This is still the same y-intercept and the two x-intercepts. Okay? So let me join them and make my new graph. There it goes. This is my function f of 2x. Do you see that? And how did the, these x-intercepts got transformed? They came halfway closer, right? So the new x-intercepts are what? 0 and 
2 and 0. This is the first one and that one is minus 1 and 0. How about the y-intercept? y-intercept remain at the original position 0 and minus 8. Correct? So this is also a very interesting pro uh, problem where the question is how will the intercepts get transformed when the function gets horizontally stretched or compressed. You must have noticed one thing, transformation of points. Let us say that x and y are the original points. Then what happens to our transformed points? Let's say these points are on the function fx. Then what happens on f of kx in general? In case of f of kx, only x points get changed and the new values are 1 over k times x and y value remains the same. So I hope this makes horizontal stretch and compression transformation much uh, simpler and understandable to you now. Okay, try some more problems and see if you can do them. Right? Thank you.